Vivi, time is something we all seem to understand, but when we try to explain it, we have few words. I'm wrestling with the idea of God and time. If I believe in a God, how does that God relate to time? Yes, time is a very, very difficult uh, concept to grab. But interestingly enough, it's not that complicated when one reflects on it. Uh, I, I will say from the Hindu tradition, I was amazed actually at an idea which is in the Hindu worldview, and that is that time is actually an illusion. The notion of time arises because of changes that are occurring in the physical universe. And this is exactly what, by the way, in the 19th century, the uh, second law of thermodynamics, Boltzmann in particular, pointed out, namely, that everything that is embedded in time is a result of what we call irreversible changes in the universe. If there is no change at all, there will be no time. And to that extent, time is an illusion. And I have to explain this word illusion in the Hindu world because there are two kinds of entities, if you want, in the world. One of them is changing, changing reality. All that changes is ephemeral, is regarded as illusion in the Hindu world. And we use the word maya, meaning that these changes give us a perception of reality, but that reality fades away in due course. If we reflect on our own childhood, for example, when we were perhaps quarreling about this and that, fighting for a piece of candy with a sibling, those things seemed so important at that time, very real. But in later years, they either they have vanished from our memory or their significance has altogether disappeared. But there is something that does not change. And from the Hindu perspective, that is the ultimate reality. So when we talk about God, here we talk about our Brahman, that is the ultimate unchanging reality. So God himself does not experience time because God is unchanging. But the created world is inevitably wrought with changes. So time arises in the physical, phenomenal world. And in that sense, one might say that God created time. From the physics point of view, the notion of I mean, just time and space and causality and matter and energy, all were co-evil, all burst forth with the great Big Bang. And uh, so, yes, Time was created with a big bang, you might say, or by God. But from God's own perspective, how, since there is now a physical world and God does interact with this physical world, how then does God not experience time and not change if God has any interaction with a physical world that has time in it? God is more a witness in this worldview to what is happening. And the witness need not be subject to what is happening. When you see a movie, you see many interesting things happening. And there are emotions and conflicts. And you may enjoy them, but you are not subject to what is actually happening, the pain and pleasure that you see happening in the world. Likewise, it is possible for God, from this perspective, to be witness to all the changes and the time that elapses with it without being herself subject to these very changes. How does this relate to modern physics? In an interesting way, I would say, because in modern physics, we have the concept of time invariance, which means that some all the laws of physics are what one calls Lorentz invariant. That means invariant, they don't change with time or space. Now, what is it that does not change with space or time? It is the laws of physics. Now, 
if you take an example of having a dinner, you see, the food that we take is something that we enjoy, we experience, but it could not have been made without someone following certain rules, the recipe according to which it's made. Now, all the food that we eat changes and disappears, but the rules by which they are made are eternal. So, from the Hindu perspective, there is a world which disappears eventually. It is called the Kshara world, or that which disappears, and there is something called Akshara, or that which does not disappear, which is permanent, always there. That corresponds to the laws of physics. And of course, one goes a step further, just as the food itself has ultimately an essence. Similarly, the universe has an essence, and that's what one calls Brahman, and that essence is never seen. It's like the energy within the molecules of the food. But the laws of nature are the permanent ones in physics, and they are not subject to change. They are time invariant. In the same manner, therefore, the the divine or the supreme or the undergirding principle in the universe is changeless with time. That, that is the view. Now, what is the understanding of the depth of time in Hindu tradition? Well, that again is historically very interesting. If you take modern physics, post-Copernican physics, certainly even before that, it was only after the discovery of radioactivity by the end of the 19th century that people started thinking about millions of years. The concept of millions of years and billions never existed in modern science until discovery of radioactivity. But in ancient Hindu thought, interestingly enough, people talked about billions, millions and billions of years very easily, almost with the same enthusiasm of Carl Sagan, one might say. <laughs> Uh, with his billions and billions of years, you may remember. Now, the, there is a story, I think, about the Buddha or some uh, Hindu sage who was asked how long will something last, and he gave a very interesting story, example. He said, imagine this mountain and wave a silk cloth against it. Every time the silk cloth is waved touching the mountain, a few parts of the mountain are lost. Now imagine for how long you have to be doing this before the entire mountain disappears. I mean, it is an unimaginable kind of uh, time frame. So the Hindu yugas, therefore, talk of not millions, but of billions of years. And this goes back how far? Uh, the Hindu concept is that this goes back for as long as you can imagine because this is a cyclical universe. It is, if we talk of the Big Bang, the universe uh, had many Big Bangs. The Hindu view is what in modern cosmology one would call the oscillating universe, meaning that the universe will ultimately come back, have a big crunch in today's phenomenology, and it will start all over again. Although it is not completely accepted by modern cosmologists as a concept, it is very interesting. And it also avoids or circumvents the notion of physical time, because current physics would say that before Big Bang, there was no time. There, here, that question doesn't arise because there has always been time in this sense as long as the physical universe associated with the physical universe is a never-ending time which had no beginning and no end. And so uh, that's an interesting view also of time. So this cyclicality of time in the Hindu tradition has no beginning. No there beginning. is no need uh, to formulate a creation because there was no beginning. And no end either, because this will continue ad infinitum, one might say. 
Uh, it is uh, the Hindu view, by the way, there are different categories of time. We, this, what we are talking about, is called cosmic time. And there is something else which one might call calendrical time. That means the change of seasons, for instance, and the change of months and days of the week. That's why. And there is a third category time, which is uh, the time of hours and minutes. And in the, uh, in the uh, framework, one attaches a special importance to the meeting of the, the two kinds of, uh, in a repetition, like the midnight, for instance. Well, there you would say sunset, sunrise. The meeting is called Sandhya, and it plays an important role in... The, in, in, the interfaces the, between the, the different kinds the, of time. Exactly. And even within a cycle between the beginning and end, as it were, of a cycle. So that, that's a, there are, these are fascinating metaphysical notions which have also had influence in the practice of the religion in many ways.